Hello, welcome to our video to help introduce horses to the jump shoot. There's an article we wrote with input from the FEH committee called Future Event Horse Introduction to Free Jumping that is posted on our blog. It has more specific information on the setup, procedure, and distances. After talking to people this year, it became clear that there is a need for a visual on how to introduce horses to the shoot. This is a system that we have found works for us in our program. This is only an introduction. Using the chute, there are so many skills you can teach a horse as his age, training, and confidence progresses. If you feel you're getting into trouble or your horse is losing confidence, get help. We're always learning and adjusting. You are looking at a picture of the jump chute set up as it was for the future event horse championships east. It's important that the height of the wall around the arena is high enough that the horse does not wish to jump out. This arena is seven foot high, but for practical purposes, indoor arenas make a safe environment to work in. There are no gaps for the horse to get around if you look in this picture. If there's an empty space, the horses will usually find it and they will definitely try and get around it. The use of safety cups is recommended in a pole of moderate weight. Too heavy and you can frighten a horse, too light and they will not respect it. We usually start by quickly lunging the horse as a warm up. We then start with a distance of a pole, 9 feet to a fence, 18 feet to a fence, 19 feet to a fence. The distance between the first two fences and the second two fences usually needs to be opened up as the horse gains confidence. Always begin with only poles on the ground where each fence will be. As the horse gains confidence, the poles will be raised to small fences one at a time. If the distance needs to be changed, only change the distance. Do not change the distance and raise the fence. Raise the fence after the horse is confident at his new distance. Here is a picture of the placement of your team. The far right is the leader, the center is the whip person, and the third is the catcher. Ideally, there is a second whip person. The leader and the whip person must work together. Both need to be knowledgeable, but the whip person can make or break the progression. Too eager and the horse gets worried, and too slow and the horse stops. The catcher usually has a tidbit or a treat or a little bucket of treats because we want to reward the horses as they've come through this shoot. We want to make it fun and enjoyable for them. For this picture, we wanted to point out covering mirrors. The mirrors at the other end of this arena were too high, so we put paper in the corners. It's like a painter's paper from the hardware store. It was about 10 feet off the corner. Horses tend to kick, run into, or strike at mirrors. It's safest just to keep them covered. The attire is a helmet, safe footwear, and gloves. We use about a three foot piece of smooth rope or leather for the strap to hold. Both the leader and the catcher have one. The rope does tend to stick a little bit when you let it go, but a snap is hard to coordinate. The other reason we use the strap is if the horse goes down the chute with the strap still attached, it just falls out, but if it goes down the chute with a lead rope snapped onto it, the rope can get caught up in a jump, which again can cause a little too much excitement and it's pretty scary. A lot can happen when you're doing the jump chute. You'll see a number of different ways that horses decide to go around jumps, through jumps, jump out of the chute. So the idea here is to be systematic and to let the horse have fun and build confidence without letting him get too excited. And at the same time, we're trying to keep him safe and our people safe. After we've lunged the horse and warmed him up, we wanna walk him through the poles as we are with this young guy here. We wanna keep it nice and quiet and relaxed, not too exciting. You'll see that we let him put his head down to take a look at the poles a little bit as he goes through. And that's okay, you, you want them to look at what they're going over rather than just staring off into space. Right now, the leader's communicating something to the position of where they want uh, the person to be at the end. And uh, you don't see it here, but the horse actually stops and gets a tidbit. And this is perfect for his first time through at the walk. As he comes through this next one, you'll see he gets a little excited as we get ready to let him go the trot through the poles. So we pulled him back and just brought him back around because again, we want to keep this quiet, not too exciting. We want to teach him that it's just sort of a relaxing exercise and it's fun. So we just do a nice quiet little step in 
and then we let him go on through and that's perfect the way he's looking down he's got his ears pricked and then he's going to get his tidbit at the end here as well they love their tidbit at the end as he went so confidently through there the last time we went ahead and put the x up you can see he does that very well and he just comes on through and he gets his little tidbit at the end again and that's exactly what we want to see him do right there since he was so confident, we went ahead and added the vertical, and same thing, he went through there, like a champ. This time we added a very small vertical, as the third element, just to give him something to step over. And he's got the game now, he's, he's pretty into it at this point. Now we raise the vertical at the end, and you'll see he gets a little blasé here. He hits this second pull, he doesn't like it, pins his little ears and scoots a little bit, and that's going to catch us up a little later on. We went ahead and added the oxer on this last one because he had been so confident, even though he had hit the pole here. A couple things happen. He's a little, little looky as he comes in, and our whip person is a little too slow there. Okay, what you don't see is, as after this, we actually pull this gymnastic down and we take him out the oxer side so he always learns to keep going forward. We don't want to turn him around and teach him that he can come back. In this next frame you'll see that we send him back through again but we changed the leader and the whip person. The whip person needed to be quicker there we don't want them to learn to stop. So we come through and he needs a little encouragement and then he figures out that he better go on forward and, and that was okay he's learning. We decided to send him through again just to make sure to get his confidence and unfortunately we get ourselves in a little bit of trouble. If you look there, the uh, leader let him go a little early, misjudged the pole, and he, and he rattled himself. So we ended up having to sort of break this back down. We let him out the other end and we started him out with small fences again just to build his confidence up and then we brought him back up through and what you're going to see is then in his last run through that he gets a little more confident. Now keep in mind, we've already sent him through and built his confidence. And as he comes through here, he's a little slow, but he did think forward. He did get it correct, and he did jump out nicely. We decided that this was enough for this horse today, as he had done a lot of jumping. It was only a second time in the shoot. He's a young horse. We wanted him to end on a confident note. So as you can see, even when things are going well, it doesn't take much for... A problem to show up and you you have to be willing to step back and address it. It's always better to do a little less than to do too much. Doing too much makes them tired, it's not so fun anymore, so you, it's better to quit wanting to do more than having gone, oh I shouldn't have done that. Alright, we'll get ready to move on to our next horse. As you'll see, this next horse is a filly. She's a little bit hotter than the first horse, a little quicker footed. And so we're just trying to bring her through and teach her that this is not that big a deal and just to take it easy. Um, she's, a, she's actually an easier horse to rattle, but she's much more forward thinking, so that plays into our favor. And that was a good walk through, just as you saw with the other horse. And you'll see here as she comes through, we let her go and she gets a little quick. In hindsight, I would like to uh, lengthen the distances for this horse. Uh, we're, like I said, we're always learning, and uh, if I had to do it over, I would lengthen it out just to make it a little easier for her to be able to figure it out. One of the reasons we didn't change the distance with this horse was that in her first session, she was a little bit looky, and it shortened her step. I was surprised that she had lengthened out as much as she had in this session. As you see when she comes through here, you'll see that the strap gets stuck, and it's okay. You just don't worry about it, it fell out, and she jumped through there nicely, it's no, no harm, no foul, she's okay. You'll see here as she comes through, the rope gets a little stuck there, just throws her attention a little bit, and she hit the rail. She didn't like it, you see how she looked behind her like that. So now we have to be ready for the next time that she goes through. As we send her through this time, you see we switched our leader and whip person again. We wanted the horse to be thinking forward. And here she comes in, she has to take a short little step, but she's thinking forward, she's very quick footed there, very smart, and so we're happy with that round. Here you'll see we went ahead and repeated that again, 
the leader needed to let this horse go just a little bit later. She had that same mistake the other horse had, but she dealt with it a little bit better um, because she's a little more forward thinking. As we come through here, you'll see that the leader takes the horse in a little bit further to get her a little straighter in there to let her see the exercise. And we're in behind her telling her to keep moving forward. She's got this pretty well figured out. Now it's funny, as she comes into this one, she looks good, she steps in well, a little stuck there, but she hits the fence, she doesn't like it again, she looks behind her, um, but hopefully she learned her lesson. Okay, now we went ahead and sent her through here with the oxer set up, just to grab her attention a little bit, and the leader takes her in, lets her go a little earlier, so she pops the pole, jumps big in, and then she actually kind of looks for an out there to the right of that fence, but luckily she continued moving forward over top of it. We'll see what happens next time she goes through. Okay, so I want you to remember about the gaps because there's a little gap to the right of this last fence. And you'll see she comes in and she's looking at that gap. She's thinking maybe she can fit in there. She can't, so she realizes it and has to jump. Um, but that's just, you know, we talk about the gaps and they see them and they will go for them. As we come through this time, you'll see the whip person's a little more aggressive here. They do not want this horse thinking of drifting and trying to head out. They have to go forward. And we got to accomplish what we needed to get accomplished. But we need to run through again just to make sure that everything's going to be confident and okay. So here as she comes through, you can see she's a little excited coming in because we were a little aggressive with the whip the last time and she remembered that. So we're going to back off with the whip a little bit. We're still going to be there, but not quite as heavy. And we got accomplished what we wanted to get accomplished, that this horse went through, she went forward, she was confident, and we ended it with her with that run for the day. Going forward with these horses, I would repeat this exercise weekly if possible, adjusting the distances as needed until this was easy for them. If they start jumping a little flat over the last oxer, it can be made to have an X in front with a rail in the back. But now I'm getting ahead of myself. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. You got to see two lovely young horses learning as they progress through the exercise. The subject of free jumping can get as in-depth as you like. This is just the tip of the iceberg. The mistakes these young horses made were normal. Normal young horse mistakes as they learn to go through and learn their footwork. Free jumping doesn't stop just at your inspection or at your championships. This is a training tool that can be used for their horses their entire life. The exercises can get as in-depth as you want to make them as the horse gets older. It can uh, help you produce a horse that's going to save you in a difficult situation or one that won't. So it's definitely something to add to your training schedule. We want to thank these young horses and the helpers helping us that cold day through the shoot, giving treats, leading them through, and videotaping. If you have any further questions, feel free to email us or call us. We'll be happy to answer anything we can. Thanks again.